Joining me live is Ilion Levy, a spokesperson for Israeli government and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Levy, is Israel now in control of the Gaza Strip? Is Hamas no longer in control of Gaza Strip? Well, Hamas has definitely lost control of the Gaza Strip, this terror organization that has oppressed the people of Gaza for the last 16 years is now fighting for its life as we come after every single terrorist who was involved in the October 7th massacre. Our plans are moving ahead. We've encircled Gaza City. We've moved in. We're advancing on its main headquarters. And we're continuing with our goal to topple Hamas and totally destroy its terror machine in response to that massacre on October 7th when they brutally murdered, executed, beheaded, burned, raped, tortured, mutilated 1,200 of our people, and as you mentioned, took 240 people, including children, including babies, hostage into the Gaza Strip. The Golani Brigade, the elite soldiers of the Golani Brigade inside the Legislative Assembly, is that victory only symbolic? Because even today, Hamas continues to target Israel. Um, there, were, there were rocket sirens and attacks, I believe, on Eshkelon in Tel Aviv even today. That is definitely an iconic image. We are coming not only to dismantle Hamas's terror infrastructure, but also to remove it from power. For 16 years, it has been terrorizing the people of Israel with tens of thousands of rockets. It's been oppressing the people of Gaza diverting humanitarian aid to build their tunnels, to build their weapons, and we are bringing that reign of terror to an end. Uh, but I should emphasize, Israel does not want to reoccupy Gaza. We do not want to control Gaza. What we want is to create a reality that will bring security for the people of Israel and make sure Hamas can no longer pose a threat to us. But certainly, uh, definitely a powerful image that shows just what a serious blow Hamas has taken after its decision to launch that atrocious massacre on October 7th. That, that, attack, that attack was atrocious. The massacre of 1,200-plus uh, people, uh, 240 taken hostage, that was truly atrocious. But many are saying that Israel is committing genocide in the Gaza Strip. So to kill a few thousand Hamas fighters and leaders who may be in Qatar or elsewhere, thousands are being massacred in the Gaza Strip, including women, and the elderly and children. No, no, I'm sorry. It's important to set the record straight. On October 7th, Hamas committed an act of genocide against the Israeli people. It invaded with death squads, intending to murder as many people as they could, and they executed them in the most brutal way imaginable. This was a campaign of systematic extermination by a terrorist group that openly vows that it wants to murder all the Jews. That is Hamas. It is a genocidal terror organization, and we are fighting it so that it cannot attack our people again and cannot commit another act of genocide against the Jewish people. Now, in order to do that, we are targeting Hamas. We are targeting the monsters who perpetrated October 7th. And we're doing everything we can to get civilians out of harm's way inside the Gaza Strip. That's why for a month now, we've been urging them to evacuate south for their safety. It's why for a week now, we've been putting in place humanitarian corridors to enable people to leave the danger zone in northern Gaza. It's why our own soldiers have been putting their lives at risk to secure Palestinian civilians so they can evacuate. The problem is that Hamas has a deliberate strategy of human shields. People don't understand how sick and twisted Hamas's strategy is. Hamas has spent 16 years embedding itself underneath schools, underneath hospitals, underneath homes, underneath mosques, because Hamas wants people to die. So, Hamas leaders so if you say want to kill openly Hamas, they want to martyr, want to kill they Hamas. want to martyr and sacrifice their people. But there are thousands people, of civilians, strategy, non-combatants, who are being killed are in this combat. And Israel and, is being accused, if you permit me, sir, Israel is being accused of starving Gazans, not giving them water, not giving them food, not letting medicines and fuel get across, Mr. Levy. I'm sorry, these are obscene accusations by people who clearly cannot open and read a newspaper. Israel has two water lines that are supplying water into the Gaza Strip. Hamas is firing mortars that are hitting our water pipelines. We're fixing them underwater and we're continuing to supply water into enemy controlled territory. The Gaza Strip is receiving humanitarian aid through the Rafah border crossing with Egypt. It's receiving food. It's receiving medicines. And there is already food in the Gaza Strip and there is no immediate shortage at the moment. The problem is that Hamas is deliberately manufacturing a humanitarian emergency because it knows that images of humanitarian suffering 
will put pressure on Israel to stop its attacks intended to destroy Hamas. And we hold Hamas fully responsible for all the humanitarian suffering in the Gaza Strip as a result of its decision to declare war on us with the October 7th massacre and its decision to fight that war like cowards from inside densely populated areas, despite our best efforts, putting our own soldiers' lives at risk in order to facilitate safe passage for Palestinians in the northern Gaza Strip out of harm's way, because this is not a war against the Palestinians. It is not a war against Gaza. It is a war against the monsters from Hamas who perpetrated the October 7th massacre, and it is the monsters from Hamas we will destroy. Will your bombing continue uh, the way it has for the past 40 days? Because there are some who say, one, there should be a ceasefire or a pause. There are others who say, including quoting uh, Hamas interlocutors, saying if there is a pause, at least some hostages could be released. We will not accept any end to the fighting that leaves our hostages in Gaza and Hamas in power. We are going for complete victory because we will not leave Hamas with the capabilities to perpetrate another October 7th massacre. That will not happen. The October 7th massacre was the straw that broke the back of a very strong camel. Now, will we consider a small pause in order to get our hostages out of the Gaza Strip? If there is a serious option on the table, a serious proposal, we will, of course, consider it. But this war will end with Hamas removed from power. This war will not leave the baby burning, baby beheading, baby abducting terrorists from October 7th in power in the Gaza Strip, free to attack our people again. We will end its reign of terror. Mr. Levy, can you give us a roadmap? How long will your operations continue now that Israeli forces are in control of Gaza City and the parliament uh, building? How long will your operations continue? Will, will the Israeli forces move all the way down to the Rafah border? This war will last as long as it takes, not a day more, not a day less. I wish I could tell you that this would be over tomorrow, and it would be if Hamas emerged from its terror headquarters underneath the Shifa hospital, waving a white flag and surrendered. But since it seems that Hamas is determined to fight to the very last man, we will fight them. They declared war on us, and we're going to win that war. It's going to be long. It's going to be difficult. None of us want to be in this situation. We have 350,000 people in reserves, pulled away from their families, pulled away from their jobs so they can go and fight. Obviously, we want them home. Obviously, we want to go back to our lives and rebuild this country. But that job of rebuilding this country will happen after we destroy Hamas, however long it takes. What does victory mean for you in tangible terms? How will you declare? What is victory for you? The total destruction of Hamas's governing and military capabilities inside the Gaza Strip. Victory will mean that the Gaza Strip can never again pose a security threat to Israel. You know, a decade ago, when ISIS captured territory in Syria and Iraq, 86 nations came together to wipe out ISIS and to take away its territorial control because they realized that such an evil terrorist organization can never be allowed to hold territory from which to attack innocent people around the world. And just as the world defeated ISIS, we are going to destroy Hamas. The only difference is this is, of course, much closer to home. Unlike the US or the UK flying half the way around the world to fight ISIS, this is literally our backyard. We have soldiers in the Gaza Strip, and if they do not stop that Hamas terrorist right now from shooting that rocket, he will shoot that rocket and hit that soldier's home just a few miles away. So we're going to wipe out Hamas like the world wiped out ISIS. We will bring to an end its reign of terror inside the Gaza Strip. Does that mean destroy sure that every Gaza... tunnel, go underneath that Al-Shifa hospital, destroy that command and control structure, wipe out every fighter? That could take, that could take forever. It took uh, eight months to a year to wipe out ISIS from Mosul and Raqqa. That is exactly what it means, yes. So eight months to a year, is that the time frame you're giving for this? That continuous pounding will continue for eight, year, eight months to a year? I'm not going to speculate on a time frame. You proposed that time frame. We haven't set deadlines. We've set targets. That target is the total defeat of Hamas. It's total destruction. And that fight will continue as long as it takes. Because we will not go back to 6 a.m. on October 7. We will not go back to a world in which Hamas can decide whenever it wants to invade Israeli villages on the border, burn whole families alive in their homes, torture children in front of their parents, parents in front of their children, 
abduct babies into the Gaza Strip. That will never happen again. And we will do whatever it takes. And it will what take however long make it takes. Of the 300,000 people who've taken to the streets, whether in the United Kingdom or protests that are happening elsewhere, or even in countries like the United States of America, where people are removing posters of those children who've been abducted, is global opinion changing? It, do they see Israel as the perpetrator and not Hamas? I mean, many are calling Hamas as freedom fighters. We are horrified and nauseated by the pro-jihad protests around the world. You know, this conflict has really given the world a moment of moral clarity. Are you for humanity or are you for barbarism? Are you for civilization or are you for savagery? And the people who are taking to the streets, calling on Israel to abandon its hostages in the Gaza Strip, calling on Israel to leave Hamas in power so it can perpetrate another October 7th massacre, are taking the side of the terror organization that on October 7th beheaded babies, burned babies, abducted babies, and I have no words for our contempt for the people who are serving as apologists for the pedophile rapists of Hamas and the atrocities they committed on October 7th. Our message to anyone taking part in protests around the world, taking the side of Hamas, is you should be ashamed with yourself. There are people like, uh, you know, Rashida Talib, uh, Talib in, in the United States who say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is not a genocidal uh, a call to wipe out Jews and Israelis. Of course it is, because between the river and the sea is the state of Israel. People who are calling from the river to the sea are calling for the demolition, the destruction, the erasure of the state of Israel. They're saying that this amazing, wonderful, democratic country that we have built here shouldn't exist. And who's going to run it? Hamas? That is your vision of liberation? The people who on October 7th perpetrated that horrific massacre? We're fighting for our survival. We're fighting for the survival of our wonderful democratic state. And the people who are chanting from the river to the sea are calling for the destruction of a UN member state. And they too should hang their heads in shame. I also want to ask you, how does Israel view Suela Breverman being removed as Home Secretary of the United Kingdom, especially at a time when she said that these were hate marchers and the Metropolitan Police were behaving in a partisan manner? We have no comment on domestic politics in other countries. But does that point towards victory of uh, radical elements, as some I'm see not it? Going, I'm not going to give you a comment on the UK cabinet reshuffle. That is a domestic political matter for the UK, which is, of course, an extremely close ally and friend of Israel that has made its support for our right to defend ourselves and to defeat Hamas a very top priority. Fair enough. And how do you see this battle pan out from this point? Um, now that you're in, in Gaza City, uh, we saw uh, General Hagari, uh, uh, you know, going inside that Rantisi hospital and bringing out details. Al-Shifa next? Well, we are moving through the Gaza Strip and we are exposing evidence of Hamas's war crimes. Our troops have discovered tunnel shafts underneath children's beds. They found rocket launchers next to children's swimming pools and amusement parks. They found cables for rocket launchers that lead into mosques and into clinics. We are exposing how the Gaza Strip has been systematically subjugated and oppressed by Hamas for the last 16 years, which instead of building a positive future for the Palestinian people, has used it to wage war and jihad and terrorism against the people of Israel. Now, of course, the situation around the hospitals that sit on top of Hamas's headquarters is very dangerous and very sensitive. It is outrageous, and the world should be outraged that Hamas has built its terrorist headquarters in the basement underneath the hospital. You know, Hamas's whole strategy is based on human shields. Hamas's whole strategy is based on putting civilians on top of its terrorists because they know that that will stop Israel from attacking the terrorists underground. It's sick. It's disgusting. And we're doing everything we can to peel away Hamas's layers of human shields. We found people that Hamas is holding hostage, Palestinians. They're keeping them as human shields in hospitals. And we're killing those terrorists so that we can evacuate the innocent Palestinian civilians to safety so that Hamas cannot use them as human shields. And we expect the whole world, by the way, to join the European Union in a very clear condemnation of Hamas's strategy of using hospitals as human shields. It's sick, it's disgusting, it goes against international law, and it must end immediately. And are you disappointed 40 days into this conflict, you haven't been able uh, to, to retrieve 
your hostages so far 239 of them is that the reason that your operations are are uh, are stalled as some would argue israeli society is of course sick with worry for the fate of the hostages these are innocent people who were ripped out of their beds and now they're being held inside a tunnel by terrorists with ski masks and kalashnikov rifles you know there's a baby in there who was nine months old when this war started he's now 10 months old there are children in there who are orphaned, orphaned, because Hamas murdered their parents in front of them, ripped them out of their arms, and are now holding three-year-old children, even younger, inside a tunnel in the Gaza Strip. You know, every time I go on air and I talk about the hostage crisis, I don't think I'm able to convey just how awful, just how terrible this reality is that Hamas is holding babies, babies, for goodness sake, hostage, hostages inside the Gaza Strip. And I don't think that there's a single viewer right now who, if their babies, if babies in India had been abducted by LET or by ISIS and were being held hostage, wouldn't expect their government to go to the ends of the earth and to do everything possible to bring them home. And so we're ramping up military pressure on Hamas. We're turning up the heat on Hamas and telling it, you had better give us back our hostages now, immediately and unconditionally, and we will make you pay. Elion Levy for joining me here on India Today. Many thanks. So very Thank clearly, you. the Israeli government really wants to go after these Hamas terrorists and get their children, their hostages back home and safe. Elion Levy, many thanks. Thank you.